straight from the FTC's blog, the Federal Trade Commission. Here's what it says. As the old adage goes, the three rules of real estate are location, location, location. But online real estate company Open Door pitched its services to home seller with misrepresentation, misrepresentation, misrepresentation. Boom. Oh, wow. And that was a resulting in skating. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for resulting the resulting in a sixty two million dollar FTC uh, settlement regarding the alleged misrepresentation to homeowners from Open Door. And this is why settlement. We built that means Zubilio, they, agree, right? they agreed to that. Yeah, they agreed to it. Yeah, because they, pro- they, yeah. they probably were looking at it was going to get worse with a bigger one. <laughs> like, let's, let's just tell the truth. It was going to get worse. Sixty two million, million dollars. dollars. Wow. This is big. This is big. Uh, my phone's blowing up. I know yeah. all of our all of our phones are blowing up. Our emails. Uh, what, what are our thoughts? What could we buy for sixty two million dollars? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, and let's paint the uh, the landscape properly on this too, right? Because like, right now with the shifted market, houses are not selling as fast for them as they once were. They're ha- they have a terrible balance sheet in certain cities. I know you have more data on that, Kayla J. And their stock has just overall not been performing. Like, I mean, when you look at a market cap, I mean, their market cap is down like 75% since they started. Like it's insane what they, they've been hit. Yeah, I just like, looked at what I sold Open Door for. I think I sold Open Door for like $15.50 <laughs> or something like yeah, that. It's like 450 right 450 now. 450 yep. or 480. Yep. Yeah, something. I think we should all buy right now. Yeah, I, I don't know. Either that or is this a, is this a perfect storm? Is this the beginning of the end of Open Door? Oof, I, I don't, I, I, I for one, you know, I know. I think there's a lot of people in the industry that want to see them go, but I, I don't want to see them go. I think that they, I think no, that they not, are, they're a necessity. They're not, not going to go. It's, I mean, they're, they're a soft bank company. Look yeah, at WeWork. Work. Yep. Yeah. We work. We work. We work. Found a way. That was dead. We work was dead. hemorrhaging over two hundred million dollars a day. I know that's insane. When you when you do put that in context, and obviously the soft bank, Jap, you know, <laughs> they're too big the, to fail. The, the Japanese government, um, you know, kind of financial backer. Billions and billions and billions. Billions. Yeah, they're, they're thinking 10, 20 years down the road. They're not thinking next next year or next quarter or anything. It would I mean, be nice to operate a business with that sort of perspective <sighs> and financial wherewithal. <laughs> Keith is left. <laughing>. Yeah. <laughs> right? Hey, hey, for all no, we, we know, have... they had it in their budget. Hey, we never know if we're going to get hit. Oh. With something, let's put $100 million aside. I guarantee they have contingency <laughs> yeah. budgets. That's a good line. But everything is, everything's <laughs> consumer behavior or consumer confidence focused today. Yeah. Right? But how many consumers are really hmm. even going to know this? So well, I, I bet I you know. a lot of consumers are pissed so. off after they, <clears throat> they sold their house open door, oh, yeah. open door listed it One of the, probably forty fifty thousand dollars $50,000 the day after they, they sold it to them mm-hmm. or a couple mm-hmm. days. That's after. That's where the complaints came from. And then they sold it and they're like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Okay, wait, let's back up. Supposed to be yeah, let's, let's put let's a spotlight on actually what it yeah. was. Cause there's right. a, there's a specific, practice that they were doing. Yeah, we were just talking about that before you guys got back to yes. the office. Yeah. So share with us what that was. Go ahead, Keith. So I would think the main reason that, you know, they were looked at for these last two years of fire sales, you know, home sales is, uh, you know, where the, I guess the possible deception could have come from the public view and, you know, the FTC, Hey, your house is worth 500,000. If you list it, here's 500,000, you know, you could list it for 500,000 and then let's just break down the difference in those fees. Right. And then, or accept a cash offer at 500,000. That's what, yeah, that's their offer. Yeah. I think that's where people were arguing the deception. And like you guys just said, and they go around, relist it for 560,000 and it sells for that or more. And then consumers like, this is bullshit. Like I thought you guys said my house was worth 500,000. Yep. Yeah, through their through their through their interface and email, they'd send you a market offer at five or a cash offer at five hundred thousand, and say if you list on the market, sell at five hundred thousand. A lot of times, they would show their service fee next to the commission. It would actually show a net profit by going to the the open door route. Yeah, because the five versus right. six. Right, and and then they turned around and of course sold the house for a nice sizable profit. Yeah, I don't think that's possible deception. I think that 
is, is deception. deception. I mean, so it's misrepresentation. Think, that's, what, that's what the FTC is. Yeah, they, and they agreed to it. So <laughs> it's important to note that the alleged misrepresentations happened between 2017 and 2019. Yeah. Yeah. They're not doing and that anymore. this practice nope. is no longer in play. And also important to note that we created a company called Offervana for this exact same reason. Yep. Because we saw what was happening. We saw Open Door out there telling consumers, hey, your house is worth 500000 or here's a market value offer at 500000 And so we thought... Mm -hmm. And what we did is we created an offer vana so that we could show sellers exactly what they could list their home for from an honest assessment yep. from a real estate agent that yep. was unbiased. Compared to a cash offer. Well, a real estate agent is that less. is supposed to have right, the fiduciary that. interest of their client, right? Like that's the that's the one of the best things about uh, the real estate practices, right? Is the representation of that home owner home yeah, we buyer, home sellers, interest. We as, we as a broker, we would never get away with that saying, hey, um, if you sell it to us for 500,000, we only charge you 5%, but if you uh, sell it or if you list it, we'll list it at five, 500,000 and, and then they end up buying it from or selling the house to us and we, and we, and we, and we make the hefty profit. They'd be pissed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. <clears throat> Yeah, it's very interesting. Like I said, I'm I'm really. I mean, obviously, this this announcement was made after the bell had rung for the day. No, could you imagine? No, it broke oh. eight hours ago. Oh, it did. It Dang. Did. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. then I stand corrected. I'm surprised. Then I, we were there, busy. We were busy working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't hit. I, I wonder if it's going to take if it'll hit tomorrow or the next day. Are you well, talking about you talking about the stock? After yeah. hours, stock hasn't mm. moved much. I don't know. Sixty-two thousand dollars or sixty-two million dollars isn't much. For to lose for open door, I guess. I mean, kind of. They're losing. They're losing millions still. So, I don't. I, don't I wonder. I, I wonder. And obviously, I've never been around or seen these uh, something like that directly before. But I wonder if they have to like cut a check for that, or I mean, obviously, you know, one-time transfer of funds. Yeah. What, what's <laughs> the payment plan? Do you negotiate payment? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Florida. I want to know what the hell is the FTC going to do with all that money? They're, they right? said they're going to give it back to the consumers. Yeah. <laughs> that, that were, there, was there that a that class action? Did you say Klarna? <laughs> Klarna. Yeah. Klarna. Was there a class action? That took me a minute. Uh, no, no it's the, the FTC. 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 There was no. So how, 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 okay, but how, how so are they going to delineate who got damaged? Well, probably because FTC the, is. the people that 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 made the <laughs> complaints. I know, says. but how do they? There how are obviously they... people that making complaints. Okay, that, that makes that, sense. They, they sold then. their house to Open Door for five hundred thousand, and they and then got Open it. Door listed it for five sixty, made fit, made five sixty, and they're like, wait a minute, you showed me this. Yep. That you were going to only list it for five hundred thousand, make five hundred thousand, you're going to get my fee, right? And, so if so, you, so what you're saying is if you sold your house to Open Door between 2017 and 2019, you should be you going might be <laughs> yes. going to make to a claim. Reach out to the FTC. <laughs> you should be submitting that info have request. For. Yes. Go get yes. that little uh, like, collect like, some cheddar. Like, 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 hmm, should we reach out to our past clients? <laughs> <laughs> we, there was a few that no, we definitely. I, I, truth be told, that's handled. not a bad idea. Yeah. You know, if you had a client that sold a home to Open Door between 2017 and 2019, you might want to let them know. Yeah. Send yep. them this article. Yep, yep. So, hey, this plays into, I've been talking a lot about the clever study on iBuyers and how 72% of homeowners would like to get offers from an iBuyer, but they would like a real estate agent on their side. Mm. And this yep. plays to, hey, you really should get an independent real estate agent to give you a fair and honest assessment of what your home is worth. And if you're an yep. agent out there, you should use Udilio to do that because you can put it on a digital platform there with your listing next to all the different cash offers that... Yeah, it's not one cash offer. It's offered. It's not just one one com one cash offer company. And that's why we created Zudilios to to absolutely give them more more of the transparency in the in the um the offer. Well, and I mean, again, obviously, we're gonna um you know speak positively to the product that we work with a lot, the, the Cash Plus that allows them to get a cash offer, and then if it sells for more on the open market, they get that difference. Exactly. Now, now if Open Door would have just if they if would have done that, they wouldn't have got fine. Five hundred and sold it for five sixty, and be like, oh, I guess we could give the sixty thousand dollars back to the the, the homeowner. That's they, what they that fine been. wouldn't have happened. That fine wouldn't have happened. Nope. So uh, many of you may be thinking that this is it. Open Door is cooked. Sixty two million dollars yeah. is a lot. I know that they're well like, with their stock tanking. Stock, on top of yeah, well, stock all the, is all the, the stock is tanked. Like, yeah, fair. So their reporting comes out uh, August 4th, so just in a couple days. But you might be thinking this is it. Like, Open Door's done. I personally don't think we are <coughs> going to put that toothpaste back in the bottle. The cash offer uh, option. Yeah, there, it, it is. is yeah, it's the, the, the disruption of technology, the digital transaction has, it has emerged, and it's not going anywhere, right? And... The other thing, as we just talked about, 
is the company or I guess the, the venture capital is SoftBank, right? They're a huge, obviously they IPO'd. I don't know if they, did they, did they get bought out in IPO? Do you know? Do you know that, Jay? I mean, I'm sure they own a lot of stuff. Uh, they still probably bought some back. Yeah, or, they're, they're not going to let it. No. They're not going to let it die. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm saying is there's a, there's a lot of very influential capital they that's involved a, in that they company. They still have a lot of cash as a company. Yeah. Oh, wait. Hey, someone just sent me a photo from Offerpad Corporation, and Brian Bear is toasting with a bottle of champagne right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Keith is like, what? I was like, let me see that. <laughs> You uh, gotta imagine. G Gary Coleman came it, back. Yeah, and if, Brian. If even I'm though Brian they, Bear, they, they rekindled. I, <laughs> I am happy right now. I mean, you gotta think that those two are very. Uh, they're neck well, and neck. Their right? stock is in the big tanker, man. It's like it's like two bucks. <laughs> two buck Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they they've definitely been on the watch. So, what do you guys think? What do you think the rebound is going to be? What do you think Eric Wu is talking about right now? Well, he knew this was coming. Obviously. And I'm guessing that they probably pushed as long as they could before breaking yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so what is he thinking? Well, he's he's, he's thinking, well, <clears throat> it's not going to happen again because we're not yeah. doing it anymore. <laughs> That's true. You know what? Being an optimist, maybe this is actually strategy because when the market was so hot and they were just crushing it with all their offers, they didn't want any negative consumer confidence where now that things are done and everybody's going to take a breath and what's going on because of they're watching the market, they're watching interest rates, they're watching, you know, inventory grow. Maybe they're announcing it, going to take their punch in the mouth, if you will. We all know that time is the, the great, the great healer in that circumstance. And then, you know, you know as the market kind of cools off and hopefully recovers in the next three six months that they'll be uh going back at it yeah i mean they're gonna they're gonna make money again I mean, it's they're just waiting for the market to i mean they have they have the bad streak yeah and uh it's gonna change it's gonna find a it's gonna find a floor and they'll be able to get their bearings and start making money again i mean i've already we're, we're already seeing it we're seeing the houses that they're buying in um they, they bought in and other markets May yeah and, end of May, beginning of June, and they're starting to, to start closing right now. And they're, we're seeing that they're, they're making spreads. So yeah, it's, well, it's just that, that, that acquisition that, that of, few months were yeah, they, were they, yeah, they really were overpaying and, and they got caught. The houses hand, they so. bought in March and April got stuck oh, with yep. them. Yep. And so yeah, how sense. many, how, how many hundreds of millions of dollars that's going to be? <clears throat> Ooh, that's going to, yeah, yeah. But can they make it up in the second part of the year? Maybe. With the volume that they're running, right? And I mean, not only that, I mean, they've, in the markets they operate in, they're a household name now, man. It's, I mean, their, their, their consumer mind share that they, that they own is massive. So yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see the, the yes. different quarters this year. The, I agree. the numbers for each quarter, it's going to be like, they're right when they, they barely made money or they yeah. broke even. And then all of a sudden this giant loss, you know? So, but Open Door has completely changed their strategy since then, because now they're pulling in a realtor that's not with Open Door to kind of share the open market experience, yeah. share what the, the seller could list their home on the open market for. So I think that if you go to Open Door today, you're going to have a very different experience, obviously, than if you yeah. had in 2017, 2018, 2019. But again, I still think your best bet if you're considering cash offers on your home is to work with a real estate agent to do that for you. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not only that, get all your options next to what the house could sell in the open market. I mean, there's so many times that if your house is still in a good area, it's presented well, even though the market is cooled off, there's still an overall an inventory shortage, right? There's still a demand of buyers. And so being able to see what your house could do on the open market next to that cash offer. Obviously there's a certain amount of convenience and certainty that comes with a cash offer, but next to what the house could list and sell for on the open market is always a great idea. And you get that from your local pro, pro your trusted real estate advisor. I think at the end of the day, you know, I'm sure it's probably painful, but I think they're going to be just fine. And I want them to be fine yeah, hey, me at too. the end of the day. Uh, I've, we've done a lot of business with Open Door in the past. I I think overall the experience was really really well, really good. And um, let's face the facts: we might not all be here together today if Open Door hadn't pioneered the technology space and forced agents to go. All right, how do we do things? Yeah, they started now? a lot of 100%. wheels turning for a lot went, of people. And then on they top really of did. that, let's th let's let's face the facts: we we had this conversation back in 2020 when all the stuff was happening. 
And then when they were, you know, it wasn't just open door, it was open door as offer pad and all these other you know, c- cash yeah. offer companies that were canceling contracts. And people were like, Oh, well, that's going to put, give them a bad name. Well, no one talks about that anymore. Nope. Right. So and, I said, and it, how, and how at the end of the day, time is the what great can, redeemer. What, the average consumer probably is going to have no clue this happened nope. and they're not going to go do the research. So I don't think it's going to affect them that much, but I'm sure it's a little painful. <laughs> It's sixty-two yeah. million yeah. dollars worth. Of yeah, pain. It's, it's sixty-two million pain, <laughs> and maybe some eight some, figures. Some, some some sleepless nights are coming up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, real quick before we wrap it up today, uh, let's let's all talk about what we would do with sixty-two million dollars, Elliot. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> uh, invested into Zudelio. Okay, Keith. Uh, buy a lot more houses than we're buying yes. right now. <laughs> yes. And and make even possibly. Uh, better offers than the offers already being made. Agreed. I would spend that sixty-two million to definitely acquire more properties and yep. help more agents and homeowners. That's right. I buy a brand new Toyota Camry, <laughs> <laughs> and then on sale. And then I buy some open door stock. Ooh, I'd well, if that doesn't <laughs> if that doesn't show what we think this is going to do for open door, I don't know what would. Thanks for joining us today on this special episode where we bring you the breaking news of Open Door. Have a great day. Thanks for listening.